Welcome. Today I'd like to talk about a strange connection between partitions and the Fibonacci numbers. To explain these concepts, let me go through them right now. The Fibonacci numbers. That's the sequence 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and so on. Very famous sequence of numbers. Each number of the sequence is the sum of the previous two terms. For example, 3 is 2 plus 1, 8 is 5 plus 3, 34 is 21 plus 13. And it begins 1, 1 in this classic way. There's lots and lots and lots of information about the Fibonacci numbers out there. They're very, very famous indeed and have many surprising properties. And I'd like to explore today another surprising property, which is to do with partitions. So what I mean by partition. Well, in this particular piece, I'm going to talk about ordered partitions. For example, if I take the number 4, I want to see if I can break that into a sum of smaller numbers, or even 4 itself. In fact, I could just write 4, that's not very exciting. But I could also break it down as 3 plus 1. Um, I could also write that as 1 plus 3. I will consider in this talk those as different partitions. It could also be considered as 2 plus 2, or 1 plus 1 plus 2, which then gives me a whole host of those variations, 1 plus 2 plus 1, and 2 plus 1 plus 1. And finally, whoops, my pen's being funny, I could write it as 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So there are, looks like, uh, 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 ways for to partition 4 into smaller numbers, or 4 itself. Okay. But what I want to do, here's the surprising connection. Take each partition of the number 4 and replace each sum, multiple, uh, sum addition sign with a multiplication sign. 3 times 1 is 3. And 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 1 times 2 is 2. And 1 times 2 times 1 is 2. Times times 2 again. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And uh, 4, I guess, is just going to be 4. There's no signs to change. And let's add up all these products from the partitions of 4. 4 plus 3 plus 3 is 10, 14, 21. So the strange multiplication operation gave me the magic number 21, which just by coincidence happened to be a Fibonacci number. And let me do this again for the number, say, 3. Let's look at all the partitions of 3 and then replace the plus signs by multiplication signs and multiply. So there's 3 itself, there's 2 plus 1 and 1 plus 2, and 1 plus 1 plus 1. Let's change those to multiplication signs and add up. So I've got 3. I've got 2 times 1 is 2, I've got 1 times 2 is 2, and I've got 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 is, uh, what's that? That's uh, 7, 8. It's a Fibonacci number. It's this guy. So, so far I've got 21 and 8. Well, let's uh, check the number 2. It doesn't seem too bad. 2 would be 2 or 1 plus 1. Mul change into multiplication signs. We've got 2 itself, or 1 times 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 adds up to 3. Number one, not much to do. One itself, change the addition signs to multiplication signs, and I've got one. Look at this. It looks like this strange operation on partitions is producing every second Fibonacci number. So I guess uh, you would, we'll make a prediction here that if I took the number five and wrote all the partitions of five, considering all the different, da 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 da, change all the addition signs to multiplications, add up all those products, I bet if you want to check it, you'll get 55. So what's going on? Why are partitions converted to multiplications this way, giving us every second Fibonacci number? That's the mysterious puzzle. So maybe you want to think about this before listening on, because I'm about to give away the answer completely. There's a beautiful way to make, th make this clear. But, you know, that takes a moment of inspiration, and you might want to enjoy having that, moment, that epiphany for yourself. So pause now if you don't want to see the answer. And if you're still listening, I guess it means you haven't paused. So here goes. I need to give a classic way of generating Fibonacci numbers in a different method. What I'm going to do here is uh, look at this puzzle. Here's a honeycomb, two, two rows of honeycomb cells. And this classic puzzle that's in many of the books, though a lot of people when I mention this do don't seem to know it, we'll make this very top left cell, excuse me, where's my pen, the start. And let's see if we can count how many ways can I walk to this rightmost cell. But there's rules to this game. I'm a B in the leftmost cell. I can only step directly to the right. I can only step downwards to the right or upwards to the right. There's every step I go has to go to a neighboring cell and it must have always a rightward component to it. For example, one path would be to go right, down, right, right, up, down, up, right, down. That's one particular path. Or another path could be, you know, down, right, 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 right. Not very exciting, but there we go. So I want to know how many different paths are there from start to end. And this seems like a daunting puzzle, and one way to deal with daunting puzzles is to make it smaller. So what I'm going to do here is uh, let's ask how many ways can I get to say this path, or just drawn a purple dot. Well, I can't go to the right. 
Because if I go to the right, then I'm forced to go backwards a little bit to the left, not allow. So there's only one way to get to that cell. One way to get to that cell there, right there. Um, let's go to the next cell over. This one up here, how many ways can I get to the cell with the second purple dot? Well, I could go directly to the right, or I could go down and up. So there's actually two ways to get there. What about this third cell? How many ways can I get there? Well, I can actually just draw it out. It's not too, this is not too bad. I can go down, over, or I can go down, up, down, or go right and then down. So it looks like there's three ways to get here. One way, two ways, three ways. Let me ask how many ways can I get to this cell? And now things are getting a little more complicated, but I'm going to use my brain this time. In order to get to the cell, I could either get to the cell directly to the left and step over to the right. And in fact, there's two ways to get the cell direct to the left, so that gives me two paths. Get to go either two ways to get to that cell to the left and then step to the right. Or I could end up with a step below it in one of its three ways and then step upwards. So that gives me three possible paths to enter that cell from the bottom. So I guess two plus three means there must be five ways to enter this cell. And then there we are. You can see the patterns generated to get to this cell down here on the bottom row. Um, I can either get directly to the left, there's three ways to get there, and then step over to the right from one of those three paths. Or I get to the cell just above it to the left, there's five ways to get there, and then step down from there. So it gives me five options to get into that cell from, the, from above, giving me a total of three plus five is eight. So we're seeing that each answer is the sum of the two neighboring cells. So in the next cell, there must be five plus eight, 13 ways to get there. Eight plus 13 is 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, and then so on. So this generates the Fibonacci numbers. Now, can we relate this to partitions? Because look what we've got going on here. These numbers on the bottom row, 1, 3, 8, 21, and so on, were the answers to the partition game. So my challenge now is to say, OK, if counting paths that end in the bottom row gives me every second Fibonacci number, is the way to interpret paths as partitions in some clever way? And if so, then the number of partitions with a strange multiplication feature must equal the number of paths, which must be every second Fibonacci number. That's our goal now. Here goes. Let's clear the picture. Let's get a nice fresh, fresh diagram. So I want to see if I can come up with a way of interpreting a path that starts here and ends somewhere on the bottom row. Let's just make it make it this one like so. Well, here's an epiphany. You know, lots and lots of thinking about this. You might realize what you could do, any path you have is going to have some up steps and some down steps. In fact, it has to have a down step. If I start on the top left cell and end up in the bottom right cell, I must have at least one down step. And maybe there's no up steps. In which case, how many paths could I have with no up steps? Well, there has to be a down somewhere. Maybe it's here. Uh, and that's it. I cannot have a second down. If I had a second down, maybe over yonder, that means I must have had an up somewhere to get to it. But if I just said there was no up steps, there is no second down. So the number of paths which have no up steps all depends on how many ways pl places I can put the single down step. Well, actually, if you look at it, I've got one, whoops, where's my pen gone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven choices of where to put that, sec second, that single down step. All right, maybe that, that was with a, whoops, let's be very clear here. That was what happened, oh, sorry, my pen. That was what happened if I had no up steps, no ups. Another option is I have just one up. So I could, and let's be count, now count all the paths with just a single up step. Well, let's put it somewhere. Maybe it's here. Now, how's this going to work? That's divided this honeycomb into two sections, the left portion and the right portion. Well, the left portion has to have a down step. It has to get down here. So there's got to be a down step somewhere in the left portion. The right portion also has to have a down step somewhere because it's starting on an up cell, ending up on a down cell. So there has to be a down step somewhere here as well. And there can only be one down step in the right half. One down step somewhere. And what are all the choices? There's one, two, three, four, five choices for where the down step could be on the right half. And there's two choices for where the down step is on the left half. And two choices to the left, five choices to the right, means we've got a total of 10 choices of where to put the down steps, given there's an up step in that particular place. But you know, that was just the up step being there. Um, my single up step could be in a, a different spot. Maybe my single up step is over here. Whoops, I'm erasing it rather than drawing it. I'm losing my pen again. Uh, maybe it's over here. Excuse me. 
In which case, where could my down steps be? Well, there's one, two, three, four choices where it could be on the left half, and there's one, two, three choices where it could be on the right half, giving me uh, 12 choices for the number of paths with an up step right there where the red arrow is. And in fact, wherever that up step is, you can see what I'm really doing is creating a partition of the number seven into two parts. For example, one times six, giving me six choices, corresponds to having an up step right yonder. That is, I only have one place where it could possibly go on the left half, and six choices where it could possibly go on, whoops, six places where it could possibly go on the right half. So all these give me all the options when I've got one up step. They give me partitions into two parts. Well, a partition into three parts, say two plus two plus three, must correspond to the location of two up steps. And let me see if I can draw that. Here comes my honeycomb again. So basically saying I've got myself two choices for a down step. Where's my pen? Which means I must have an up step there. I give myself two choices for the next down step, which just means I must have an up step there. And I give myself three choices for the next da uh, down step. So yep, that corresponds to two times two times three, uh, four, twelve possible options for a for path with two up steps. In fact, we can now see any path has some up steps, and those up steps determine a product of a partition of the number 7. Now the total number of paths to get here is going to be uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, this is very boring, 34, 55, uh, 89, 144, oh gosh, I can't do this quickly, uh, 2, <laughs> this is very embarrassing, 2, 30, uh, 3, and then this is, what is it, 377. I believe that's the exponential number. So there are 377 paths to that position. Uh, some will have up steps. If there are two up steps, that corresponds to a partition of the number 7 broken into three parts, and the product of them corresponds to the number of paths with those ups in those places. Therefore, all the possible partitions with their products done this way correspond to all possible paths that end at the bottom rightmost cell. There must be the number of ways to take the partitions of the number 7 and multiply their parts together must give me the answer 377, no matter what. So doing this partition trick must give me every second Fibonacci number. There we are. Whew. Now I've done another video uh, which gives me another two puzzles with Fibonacci numbers with surprising answers, which comes with other ways of interpreting these paths. In fact, there's a myriad ways of interpreting these paths, and that's going to be lots of fun. All right, I have challenged you to look at those and come up with your own different interpretations of Fibonacci walks. Thank you so much.